objective of BioFlow 5 was to confirm the safety and efficacy of the Osira stent relative to the Zion's drug eluting stent in a patient population that was representative of those routinely encountered in clinical practice. It was a confirmatory trial in some instances of prior randomized trials with the Osiris stent relative to the Zion stent. It's important too that it was against the Zion stent because the Zion stent as a durable polymer everolimus saluting stent has in many ways been held as the benchmark or standard for comparison. But further, the purpose of the trial was as a key pivotal or regulatory trial for United States approval and bringing that stent to the United States potentially. So the application of the design of the BioFlow 5 trial was the gold standard, a randomized clinical trial. And specifically, BioFlow 5 was designed as a randomized non-inferiority trial, designed to demonstrate non-inferiority to this benchmark standard, the Zion stent. It turns out, as we'll soon discuss, superiority was instead demonstrated, but the study was designed to compare patients treated, as I've mentioned, in representative real-world real, real world practice to compare outcomes among patients treated with the Osiris stent versus the Zion stent. In addition to that, however, we also combined the outcomes of the BioFlow 5 patients with two predicate regulatory trials, multi-center randomized trials, BioFlow 2 and BioFlow 4, in what's termed a Bayesian analysis population. And this is a way to enhance the efficiency of a clinical trial to demonstrate with even greater what we term statistical power with a larger sample size with greater certainty of the results an opportunity to compare those CSIRO stent from other pooled trials along, uh, along with a comparison against the Zion stent. In the BioFlow 5 trial, among the 1,334 patients who were randomized in what we term a two-to-one fashion to the OSIRO stent versus the Zion stent, we demonstrated in this trial a few notable findings. The first is that procedural success, which is the successful treatment of the lesion and the absence of in-hospital major adverse cardiac events, was significantly higher among patients treated with the OSIRO stent compared with patients receiving the Zion stent. Further, with regard to the trial's primary endpoint of target lesion failure, and this is a combined endpoint of cardiovascular-related death, of target vessel-related myocardial infarction, and of ischemia or clinically driven target lesion revascularization, that there was a significant difference in this outcome at one year that favored treatment with the Osiro stent compared with the Zion stent. In particular, too, the outcome of target vessel-related myocardial infarction was also significantly lower in the OSIRO cohort compared with the Zion's cohort. This was one of the major drivers of this composite endpoint of target lesion failure. And further, with the OSIRO stent, the rate of target lesion revascularization was exceptionally low, 2.0%, and through one year, the rate of what we term definite probable stent thrombosis was only 0.5%. In particular, prior studies comparing the science stent versus the Osiris stent have largely been limited in their sample size and thus haven't had the design or what we term statistical power, the opportunity to demonstrate potential differences. That said, however, there is one large trial, the Bioscience trial, which was an independent investigator-initiated study that did in what we term a broad, unselected all-comers population compare outcomes with the Osiris stent versus the Zion stent. Although this stent this trial, rather, did not demonstrate significance like what we observed in today's study. On the other hand, in a large subgroup of patients, you know, over 400 patients with acute myocardial infarction, we saw somewhat similar findings with a significant reduction in target lesion failure among those receiving the OSIRO stent compared with the Zion stent. So again, by cross-trial comparisons, a bit of similarity in some regards. I think in many ways the success observed in this particular study with the Osiris stent is really a composite of many different features and the trial really wasn't designed to demonstrate the significance of one singular factor. One of the factors is a highly biocompatible bioresorbable polymer. The other is a very proven antiproliferative agent, sirolimus. But the third is a very thin strut design of stents, 60 microns that are th the thinnest in class. And historically, in com prior comparative studies involving different stents, we've seen over the years of stent iteration that lower or rather thinner strut stents are associated with lower rates of both procedural but also late-term related myocardial infarction. And here we have a comparative trial of two stents, one that is 60 microns in thickness, one that is 81 microns in thickness, and it's least 
hypothesis generating or exploratory that this may be one of the contributing differences. I think the, the impact of this trial is really twofold. One is that the study will hopefully lead to approval in the United States as a key regulatory trial. And the second is that for the 100 countries in which this technology is presently available, that it should reaffirm or reassure physicians of their use. And secondly, it might call for a reappraisal of the relative benefits of this stent uh, among other stents that might be available. We have dedicated follow-up in this trial through five years, and so we hope to prove the benefit of the bioresorbable polymer component and the long-term safety associated with this stent. The other potential impact is from an economic perspective in the sense of if we can avoid future adverse events, obviously that would be cost savings and meaningful to patients. The manuscript, I'm pleased to say, is published today online in the journal The Lancet.